Recently, I was doing a little bit of DIY around the house and I was using my trusted old fashioned spirit level which I'd had for many years and it served me really well. Whilst I was working I had an idea, I thought it would be really cool to have one of those digital levels that I had seen online and in hardware shops just to make things a little bit easier. And then I had another idea, I thought to myself that I could use my 3D printer and some really basic electronics to make my own level which means that my readings would be more accurate, easier to read, and most importantly, it just sounds like it'd be good fun to do. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you step by step how I designed, tested, and made my own digital level using a 3D printer and some really basic electronics. Let's go. So the first component we're gonna be using is a GY521, which is a little gadget with a sensor that detects movement and rotation. We're going to use it in our digital level because it can help measure how tilted or straight something is and collect our data for us which we can then output elsewhere. There's a simple OLED screen and this is what we're going to use to print out all the data that the GY521 has given us just to give it that nice graphical representation. And lastly the Arduino Nano which will act as the brain of our digital level. This will read all the tilt and movement data from the GUI 521 sensor and it will display all the measurements that we collect on the OLED screen. So this is really the heart of the operation. So with all the components lined up, the next step was working with ChatGPT to finalize the wiring instructions and also the program or the sketch that we'll upload to the Arduino to get it to do all the thinking for us. After a bit of trial and error, I was able to get the exact program that I had in mind. So once I had all the instructions from ChatGPT, I wired everything up as it instructed using a breadboard. I wanted to add this step first just to make sure that the circuitry and the program worked before committing all my components to being soldered up. So that's why this part was really important. And as you can see, once we wired everything up, uploaded the sketch to the Arduino, everything was working absolutely fine. So this was just a great proof of concept before moving on to soldering to make sure we don't waste any components. So now that we had everything working on the breadboard, the next step was to get everything soldered up into its final circuit form. So for the final circuit, I'm going to be using a perf board, which I find is a really good convenient midpoint between a breadboard and a full on PCB. A breadboard obviously for the final product is just a little bit too clunky and PCBs are great, they just take a little bit too long to make so a perf board fits in between just right. Then we've got the OLED which we went through before to output all the data, our GY521 and lastly to power everything wirelessly I'm going to be using a small battery pack that houses two 3.3 volt cell batteries which we'll solder onto the circuit as well and we'll build into the housing. So these are all the main components we'll be using for the final circuit. So once everything was soldered up, it was just a case of testing it one more time to make sure everything worked. And as you can see in the video, everything was working just like a charm. So the next step was to go ahead and fire up Fusion 360 and make a case for all this circuitry. So I fired up Fusion 360, made a little mock-up of the circuit board and the battery pack, and then modeled the case to go around everything, which I then sent off to 3D printer to get started. Thank you. 
And here we are guys, here's the final product. So, I was really happy with the way this turned out. It's fairly low use on filament, which is always good. I like to try and keep my designs as minimal as possible. It works, which always helps. And all in all, it looks pretty good. So it's a fairly solid design. In terms of what could be better, I think we could have gone for a slightly bigger OLED and that would have just added a bit more screen real estate, would have made everything look a little bit nicer. The design could have been jazzed up a little bit just to make it a bit more interesting and a bit more exciting. And at the same time, I think I could have used a smaller perf board just to try and minimize the circuitry a little bit more. That way I could have gone for a slightly smaller form factor. But all in all, I'm really happy with the way this turned out and I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment. And if there's any more videos you'd like to see from me, just give me a shout. But otherwise, I'll see you all next time.